uh, will be shared with uh, with the group. Uh, I hope uh, some more people join. Uh, looks like. Uh, uh, go ahead. So, so roughly, uh, how many people can be joining uh, this session? Uh, it is always unknown because um, because this is doesn't require um, registration. So right. right. Uh, so we wait, you know, for like three minutes. There are people joining right now. Mm -hmm. We have already gone up to eight mm -hmm. participants. Okay. Okay. Um, so um, as soon as we cross. Um, you know, 10.03 or 10.04, that is New York time, then I will um, do the administrative trivia, which is basically uh, talking about the antitrust policy and the, um, and, uh, the code of conduct. Actually, let me, let me do that right away. Uh, so, all the calls in Hyperledger follow the antitrust policy by the Linux Foundation, which basically means that we are not here to collude, to fix prices, or to do anti-market activities. The other one is um, the code of conduct. The code of conduct really talks about the way in which we should conduct ourselves in such meetings. One thing is that we can disagree with people without being disagreeable. So that's one aspect. The other two aspects, I, there are many, but most of the other aspects are things like you are not going to um, quote someone without attributing, nor hog the time and start talking about irrele irrelevant topics. These are the only uh, restrictions. Otherwise, the meeting is completely open. And I'm thankful to get Kuntita and Chavisa on the call. I hope I'm pronouncing your names correctly. Um, my apologies yes, you have. if I'm not. And I was reading the um, ADB paper, which uh, consists of two parts, the one um, about internum that uh, that uh, Tom was mentioning just a moment ago, and the other is about the scriptless bonds, which I, I suppose the um, they will, um, the presenters will go into greater detail on. It is a tough period right now, especially in the U.S. Um, and holidays are coming up, so people are not flocking to these calls, and they are always, um, we used to have something like 20 participants. Uh, we seem to have dropped quite a bit uh, in the recent past. But no matter, we are going to have all of this material available in public, so the whole point of Hyperledger Capital Markets SIG is to create a uh, resource that would have both presentations and recordings mm -hmm. that can be used uh, asynchronously. Anyway, I'm not going to hold forth any further. I'm going to ask Kantita and um, Chavisa to start their presentation. Uh, you can share your screen. Uh, and you can, um, you know, it's best to uh, allow people to ask questions in the middle if possible. Otherwise, you run through your presentation and then we can uh, talk about questions. 
thanks again for showing up and uh, making yourself available to talk about this important topic. All right, hello, uh, you guys can hear me okay? Can you guys see the slides? Yes, uh, we can hear you and we can see the slides. Uh, right. Um, hello from Thailand. Um, Kantitat Ali Jitranuson. I'm the uh, project manage, man, management officer of the DLT Scriptless Bond project. And I'm also here with uh, my colleague from the IT department, uh, Shavisa. Uh, she oversees the, the IT part of this project. So, um, so as you may know, um, we, we have been um, doing the DLT Scriptless Bond project and we have uh, started our journey in in uh, in uh, as a in POC. We we pilot uh, build, we 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 built a pilot prototype system first. Like back in the 2018, it took us about six months to to finish the prototype system, and we proved that the the concept is workable in practice and it can be implemented in in into production. So it took us from roughly about two years from, from early 2019 to 2020 for us to implement the DLT bond platform, which is the, the platform that is used to, to, um, to register bond and sell bond, uh, uh, government bonds. Um, the, the, the project successfully went, went live and uh, it supported the <coughs> two issuance in the past, like in, in uh, roughly about 25, 26 August, we the the new platform supported the sale of a moving forward issuance and one bad bond issuance. Um, the first on the moving forward issuance is it is the traditional way of uh, issuing uh, government saving bonds for sale. Um, uh, we open from for sale from 26 August and finished the, uh, the sale on September 11. So it was uh, open for sale for individual and non-profit organization and the value worth roughly about 55 billion baht. It, uh, yeah, it took us uh, quite uh, about only nine days for us to uh, come to sell out the whole 50, uh, 45 billion uh, baht worth of bonds. Uh, to the public, the total trans transaction was roughly uh, about thirteen thousand transactions. Uh, the value for each transaction is roughly about one point eight million baht. Uh, that and that's for individual and uh, of course the for the uh, non-profit organization it is uh, much higher, like twelve uh, to about twelve million baht. Uh, so that's the traditional issuance. Uh, we also are open for for one baht bond sale, and that's the second issuance of one baht one baht bond sale. And we uh, opened for sale roughly about the same period, and that was sold out uh, much sooner. Uh, but the, the the value that we issue for sale was uh, a lot lower. It was only five billion baht, and it was open for sale uh, for Thai individuals age fifteen and older through the e-wallet application that was uh, uh, developed by the, the Groom Thai Bank, uh, uh, which is. The, the aim of uh, this kind of bond issuance is to uh, allow bond sales to reach a uh, vast majority of Thai people, of Thai investors who are underserved financially. And um, uh, for investors to be able to purchase bonds to uh, e-wallet, uh, that's the way that the, the Ministry of Finance, they were looking to go. So that's why they implemented this service. So the What's uh, unique about uh, this bond issuance is that the par value of the bond is set at uh, about at, at one baht, but the minimum purchase is 100 baht. So that's uh, even uh, it, roughly about $3. If you, and the minimum amount that you can purchase bond is only $3 roughly. So uh, as you can see, the average value per transaction for uh, this kind of bond is, uh, is far lower. It's only a uh, 0.27 million baht per transaction. So um, uh, this 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 is the overview of the 
bond issuance that were issued through bond platform. I'll talk to you about the um, the more about the business uh, process and then the uh, IT architecture after afterwards. Um, okay, uh, about the the this project, uh, I would like to talk to you first on the parties that are involved. In. Uh, firstly, um, the BOT, uh, the Bank of Thailand, we, we act as the, the platform and service provider of the DLT bond platform. Basically, we govern the platform and operate the system. Uh, we provide uh, common services and we provide operational support for our platform and common services. Um, then we have the, uh, as you can see on the right, the uh, public debt management office who is under the Ministry of Finance. Uh, they are the issuer of the government bond in this platform. Uh, we have the uh, Thailand Security Depository, who is the Central Securities Depository, and we have the selling agent banks. And that uh, in this phase, we have uh, four banks uh, who who sell government saving bonds. That uh, including the Bangkok Bank, Krung uh, Thai Bank, Kasikon Thai Bank, and Sayam Commercial Bank who uh, also uh, owns the, uh, actually uh, each of us within the this circle owns uh, separate nodes. So their role within uh, this network is to establish node and connect to the platform. Uh, they have to regularly maintain operational health and they have to comply with security standard and operational guidelines that the BOT set. So basically, we, we develop the, the system and we develop the standard. And we provide uh, those standards for our members to uh, develop their nodes within and connect it to the, the platform that we built. So um, these are the main uh, di the direct members of the DLT bond platform. But we also have the Thai BMA, who is uh, also responsible for assigning the Thai symbol code, Thai symbol, which is the, the uh, domestic code that is assigned to uh, bonds. So this is the, the overview of the participants within the network. Uh, but only Thai BMA doesn't own the node, but they connect to this network via, via API. Okay. Um, uh, I'll roughly talk to you about the, the role of each participant, the issuer, the public debt management office, they have the role of uh, to assign the bond information and selling criteria onto the bond platform. Uh, at this stage, the, the bond registration uh, function within the uh, platform is not yet went live, so uh, we, we still, uh, we're currently working on it now. The issuer also uh, responsible for register bond information and selling criteria and announce bond for sale. The selling agent banks, uh, their role is to sell bond to investors uh, through their own channels, whether they be uh, mobile or internet banking counters or the team. Uh, they, uh, their role is also to collect uh, money from the investors and transfer uh, uh, money that they receive from subscriptions to the BOT. And then uh, they have to provide uh, delivery confirmation to investors. Uh, they also need to uh, update the bookkeeping, uh, the records, uh, customer records as well. Uh, in terms of the, the Bank of Thailand, we have uh, the role within the, this network is we verify sell transactions and allocate bonds according to subscriptions. Uh, uh, we transfer money that we receive from the uh, selling agents to the uh, public debt management office. And we also notify uh, the uh, TSD, who is the security depository, uh, to deposit bonds onto the investor's account. And on the TSD role, we, uh, they have to assign the ICIN and CFI code, and they have to open security accounts for the investors and deposit bonds onto uh, those accounts. Uh, and finally, the Thai BMA, they assign bond uh, Thai symbol, as I, as I mentioned. So um, I'll, I'll illustrate uh, more uh, clearly in later slides. Uh, so um, before we implemented the, the bond platform, we have thought about it uh, quite, uh, quite, 
quite a lot and we, we discussed with our stakeholders. Uh, we were working in groups using the design thinking method and so that we can not only build a new system but also uh, discuss with them and re-engineer the process that can be agreed upon all parties uh, that I mentioned earlier. So uh, each of them have to make a little bit of adjustments or or if not a lot of adjustment, <laughs> I specifically uh, refer to the uh, selling agent banks who have to, to change their process quite a lot. So um, this slide, I would like to show you the previous process before we implemented the bond platform. Uh, this is the previous process that we have, as, and you will recognize that it is very, um, very slow and very inefficient. Um, First of all, like if investors want to purchase bonds, uh, they have to uh, send the bond subscription to selling agent banks and whether that be any channels that selling agent banks provide. And then um, selling agent banks, uh, once they receive uh, bond subscriptions from the investors uh, in terms of money, they, trans they, they collect the money and then transfer the money to the BOT. At the end of the day, once a day, the BOT collects all the money. So we, we act as the, the BOT act as the um, paying agent of the government bond. So we collect all the money and then transfer to the issuer within that same day. So the is issuer would uh, get uh, the bond money from bond sale at the end of the day. But however, on the uh, in terms of bond subscriptions to be recorded onto the uh, security depositories or onto the bond book of investors, it can take up to about 15 days. And that's because the transactions that are done by the investors are weighted to be, uh, to be submitted to the BOT on the weekly basis in batch file. So selling agent transfer the subscription to the BOT every Tuesday, and then the BOT would uh, collect all those subscriptions and then deposit the bond subscription onto the TSD every Friday. So at this stage, it can take already up to T plus nine. And, for, and once the uh, investor's information is recorded onto the TSD, it can take another five days, six days for the selling agent banks to uh, update the bond book of the investors. So Total, totally can take up to T plus 15 for bonds to be deposited onto the investor's account. And so, and that's, that's quite a, a long period of time. So we, we decided to re-engineer the process. We, we think about new process and we think about the new platform altogether. So this is how it looks like uh, after we implemented the, the new process and platform. Customers, uh, investors can still purchase bonds uh, through the, the same channels that uh, they previously uh, had with the selling agent banks, but instead, but uh, uh, in including the mobile banking, counter ATM and in internet banking, we also have the bond direct app, which is the application that is provided by the public debt management office uh, for investors to directly purchase bond uh, directly to, uh, onto the Ministry of Finance. Then we also provide another channel, the e valid channel that supports the sale of the one bad bond. So uh, once investor purchase bonds uh, through the selling agent bank channel, then the, the bank would send the subscription to the DLT bond platform that's uh, within the, the big circle here. Uh, we have the queue management uh, system. This is a non-blockchain system, but it's very um, important one since uh, time sequence is very crucial in, in bond allocation. Bond has to be allocated on the first come first serve basis. So we implemented this system so that um, each is uh, each uh, subscription is timestamped and then waited onto the queue before it's allocated and be written on the black on the blockchain. So. Um, once the bond is recorded on the, the blockchain, then uh, it is uh, waited until uh, the end of the day. Then the platform would notify the selling agent banks 
uh, to transfer money uh, to the Bank of Thailand, and that's done via the botnet system, which is the which is the high value uh, uh, the high value payment system that operates by the Bank of Thailand. So the selling agent banks would transfer money to to Bank of Thailand, and then at at that at that day and then on the t plus one the platform would notify the uh the tsd to open security accounts in case that investor do not have the security accounts or directly deposit the bonds onto the investor accounts if they already have uh, their accounts so the deposit process is finalized within t plus one so um, once it is finalized, then the selling agent banks can confirm to the investors on the on T plus two date. So as you can see, the process can be shortened much, uh, by by much uh, from T plus fifteen to T plus two. So the the final process of uh, bond allocation. Uh, of the of the of our project ends on the deposit uh, part, but uh, uh, we have yet to uh, support other like sec uh, transactions that are done in secondary market, including the transfer of ownership or the coupon payments and stuff are still being done within uh, the exist existing framework. Um, meaning that the selling agent banks or the custodian banks they have to uh, 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 send the uh, inquiries to the TSD using the existing network, the, the PTI system, and and transfer bonds over there. Uh, and and those uh, transactions are not recorded back onto the bond platform. So platform only acknowledge the uh, the deposit of bonds in the primary market only. So uh, this is our current pro process. Uh, also, I would like to talk to you a little bit more about the bond registration uh, uh, part, which we have yet to uh, go live our, our systems. So uh, this will be, uh, hopefully will be final, uh, will be finished by the end of uh, first quarter next year. So in terms of bond registration, the PDMO over here, uh, they would have to assign bond information and selling criteria uh, onto the bond platform. And then the bond platform would then uh, re uh, send the notification to uh, the Thai BMA to request for bond symbol. The, the Thai BMA then, then, the uh, then assign bond symbol and send it back to the bond platform for the BOT to notify TSD to assign ICIN and CFI code. And then TSD then assign ICIN and CFI code accordingly. <coughs> and then um, after that, the uh, once all the information is uh, gathered from Thai BMA and TSD, then the public debt management office can then publish bond for sale. And after that, the all the selling agent banks can then inquire bond information from the platform. So that's uh, that's it for the bond registration. So um, that's uh, that's the end of my part on the business part, the business process. Uh, any question from from you guys? Money has a question on the chat, which says, "Why do we need a blockchain for this?" Looks like the Blockchain is only between key stakeholders, not visible to selling agent or end users. But it looks like it's visible to selling agents, right? Or am I? Yes, it is. Uh, it, all the participants within the network can can inquire for bond information and bond sales, and they only um, for the selling agent banks. They don't see all the information, but they only see the the information that on the need to know basis only their customer transactions or the public information like such as bond profile that they can see. Uh, the reason we, we use the blockchain is that um, we, we have, uh, it's more about capacity building. At, at the Bank of Thailand, we have uh, Explore 
potential use cases that blockchain can be applied. In. For instance, uh, we also we also exploit in in Tenon project, which is the the CDDC project, and we also exploit it in this in this project as well. And there were times that we consider many use cases, and we we were actually not seeking for the right use cases, but the the timing was uh, right to establish a new system and process because it was so inefficient, and we we deemed that the the script response project is it's not a risky one. It only uh, focusing on the small group of participants, only eight participants. But the knowledge that we can get can be quite valuable for our for any projects that we will undertake in the future. Um, the benefit that we see from adopting blockchain is that um, from what we study is that like uh, the it could enhance resiliency and transparency of the of the network. Uh, for instance, if one node fails, then other nodes can still perform smoothly. And moreover, if uh, data that can be, in terms of transparency, data has to be verified by more than one party within the network. So transactions cannot be amended or forged. So that that's what we learned before. So that's why we, it kind of, uh, make us want to study more about blockchain. This, this is not just theory. You have actually issued the bond and sold it to people. Yeah. Um, that is to put it in context, 50 billion baht. That is about uh, 1.5 billion dollars. Yes, that's about right. Okay, uh, so one point five billion dollars has been uh, has been uh, sold through this platform. Uh, now, are we going to take a break here, or are we going to go to the IT part? How how do you want to run this? Because there are people I'm sure who have questions. Um, so it depends on you and your uh, colleague. So, and any more questions from the business side? Otherwise, I'll, I'll let my colleague run through the IT part first, and then you can ask any question you like. Uh, the, again, this is Manny again. Uh, are the selling agents having, uh, do, do they take a node in that uh, DLT platform, or they just do the API, they do all their inquiries? They, they have their own nodes, and they can inquire via the DLT bond platform directly. Okay, thank you. So you're probably using yeah. some kind of uh, uh, private data uh, collections uh, so that everything is not visible uh, in Hyperledger Fabric, right? Anyway, we'll go into that detail in, uh, in when we talk to Chavita. Okay, I'll, I'll let you um, listen from my IT colleague first. Maybe you can get more idea on it. Yeah, yeah. And we, you know, there are a bunch of questions about other things too, but does anybody else have any questions? So let's let's proceed then. And thank okay, you. Okay, let's for, hear from Chavisa then. Yes. Uh, thank you anyway for, uh, I mean, thank you for showing up and uh, and explaining how you're going forward. Okay. 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 Thank you, Kun Uh I'm Charissa, and today today I'm going to talk about the the DRT bond platform in the IT part. As Kun as Kun Kanika said. Uh, has already explained about uh, our participant, as you can see. So this slide is made quite a bit uh, deeper. So you can see that uh, we have a blockchain network that composed of uh, seven nodes of, of our stakeholder. And in order to connect to the blockchain, so every, every stakeholder will own the API server for connecting through the blockchain. And as you have just already uh, listened to the Kunkantitat, so there are a few um, business 
business data that that can be illustrated as you can see from this slide. So for each box is um, represent the uh, role of the stakeholder. So for the TSD, uh, for the, I will start from the the left side first. So for the BOT or us, we are the registration. So there will be some information like the bond information or the, the payment data or the sales transaction that we will interact with the uh, DOT bond platform. Or TSD, as you have just only listened that from the first form from the prior part, that there will be uh, including with the ISIN, assigning ISIN, right, or acquiring the uh, CFI code. So there will be, so you can see that there, there, are, there are some data that we have to uh, segregate first. And then we have tried to uh, compromise and then we separate the type of the blockchain channel into two, two, two parts. The first one is we see that some data is quite a secret. It's confidential, right? So like the cell 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 transaction data, we cannot is is it has to be confidential for each selling agent so that we separate. We we uh set the private channel for uh for four channel which we compose of the register, register registrar live BOT and the PDMO and TSD and only one selling agent for each channel. And the second type of the bond channel is the bond registration. This channel you can see that all the stakeholder will be joined because uh, the bond registration is will be the part that is related to the bond information. So everyone will access the same information to, together. And maybe I, I will jump too fast. And actually, uh, let, me, let me introduce, let me uh, speak first. And if you have any question, you can ask at the end of my presentation. Okay, so after, after we have designed the channel as, as, I, as I show you from the previous slide, so this one is the solution architecture that uh, we used with all the, all the stakeholder. It means that each stakeholder will have the same solution architecture like this. So for, for the common use case like the bond selling part, this, uh, I, will, I will start from the bullet one first. So if the user like the end user, maybe as, as you can see from the pilot slide, uh, maybe the people uh, buy the bond via the mobile channel, right? So uh, the data will be sent to the new web app and then and then this new web app is mean like the 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 in-house system of the selling agent like Bank of Bangkok Bank, and then uh, the the data will uh, send to via the API, and it will send to the send to the part of the sales and reservation system. So after after we has already do the the. Allot the the quota allocation the one quota allocation the data will be uh, will be invoked to the to the blockchain and then the result of the quota allocation will be sent through the notif through to the through the to the to the number five here and will send to the notification service after that uh, the data will be collect in the event store and it will transfer to through the uh, in-house application of the selling agent. So this part is for the high throughput transaction of the bond selling as time is crucial. And the technology that we use in this project is also, as you can see from here. So for the for the selling and reservation system part, this part is include about the bond quota allocation so that we have to use some kind of uh, rapid MQ and Redis to uh, enhance the, the, the high, high, high throughput of transaction. And we also use the blockchain hyperledger fabric 
which also uh, we also on the IBM blockchain platform for collecting the data of the sales transaction and also help to automate some kind of the open account transaction with TSD and also credit the bond with the TSD as well. Uh, okay, so if you guys, uh, oh. and and also, um, not actually this part is, uh, is about the the high throughput transaction. But for the normal operation, like we have to inquire data from the blockchain. Okay, so let me show this slide. So, uh, the the end user or maybe the bank can also inquire the data via the API as well. Yeah. And so they can also invoke the data from the blockchain and receive the data back here. Or some actually there are also some type of the 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 business the, the business transaction as well that maybe the the selling agent also submit the sales transaction from to through the uh, centralized system, right? But after they submit the transaction through the central centralized system, they also receive the result of the open account via the blockchain here. So you can see that there also this line as well. This this line is the event that we use uh, in the in the in the blockchain for 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 trans for sending the data from the blockchain. Okay. Okay, that's that's the end of the IT part. If you guys have any question, please feel free to ask. So you said uh, uh, Kamla just asked a question about the number of uh, uh, organizations. Um, I think it had, according to what I understand, there were seven seven uh, organizations, right? Yes, seven. Yeah. Okay, um, so uh, so come this here actually. So this all organization in the IBM blockchain platform or uh, across different clouds or the, only the IBM cloud? Yeah, all of them on the IBM cloud, IBM blockchain platform. Yes. Okay, but but in the architecture, except it's only the one organization, peer one, peer two. Or there are uh, different seven IBM blockchain platform means means the seven different uh, organizations, right? Yes. Yes, different organization. But yeah, you, yeah, each of them will own their own account on the IBM blockchain platform. Um, okay. Okay. So. Yes. Sir. The most most uh, interesting part about this is the way in which you guys are going forward by integrating aspects of existing platforms, uh, existing legacy system, and only uh, disrupting some parts of the system. For example, you're not automating the, uh, let's say, OMS, or order management system, on the blockchain, you're creating a separate, uh, separate uh, queue, the RabbitMQ queue for the for that for the high value throughput, and then your uh, and the other interesting part is the way in which you've segmented your uh, solution using multiple channels because that is a uh, architectural feature of the the platform you selected which is ibm i mean which is ibm blockchain which is based on typology of fabric uh, so these two are uh you know sort of artifacts of what and how you you know the platforms that you chose is it possible that you could have done this with private data collections or, or it would become much more complicated uh, since the data is the data, data privacy is quite important right now, right? So actually, we segregate 
some part of the the, the personal data into into this centralized system. So in the blockchain, they, we we didn't keep the private data. I mean, like my my own address or my own. Telephone. That's not what I'm asking. I'm talking, oh. I'm talking about the way yes. you have designed the system, which is basically having those channels, uh, the separate channel with each. So there are, let's say some privileged nodes, which are basically the, uh, the mm -hmm. BOT, the uh, issuer, and some other nodes, uh, like mm -hmm. PDMO and uh, TSD. And then for each, for each uh, bond agent or a selling agent, you have a separate channel for yes. the sale information, payment information, and depository information. Uh, and mm -hmm. then uh, you have a public channel, which is basically public data about the bond, the bond registration, which is basically the uh, ISIN the, uh, and the Thai bond ID and several other bond characteristics. Mm -hmm. What the question I'm asking is, can you do it with one channel if you had private data collections, which are, which are features in block, in uh, IBM uh, blockchain or in, uh, in Hyperledger Fabric that allows you to create those channel-like structures using something else uh, and co a less complicated channel setup. I don't know. Uh, I mean, this is um, just a question about uh, what's possible. Uh, at, at, at the time that we, we have implemented this project, a private data has just come. So it's quite a little bit new for us. And actually, uh, we actually, um, if we have to consolidate all of them together, Maybe maybe that if there are some some maybe it's possible yes but 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 yeah I get it I get it you, but, you, did, it, you did it at a particular point in time when this was still uh, uh, kind of new so you chose this approach mm -hmm. so uh, not only yes. that and, I mean, and and go ahead yeah go ahead. and as, as and as, and it's quite if you have to make sure that all the data will be segregated, I mean, like if we do the private data collection and we have to prove a lot that uh, each selling agent will not see each other data. I, I mean, yeah, but but for the pro actually for the for the for the for the for the for the if if, if we separate the channel, it's quite clear cut. Yeah. For, for, for presenting to, to other people as well. True. Uh, so it depends on the number of selling agents. If you have many, many, many selling agents, then this mm. approach becomes very uh, slightly more uh, difficult because each new selling agent needs a uh, new channel. And uh, then, you know, uh, as, uh, as the platform scales with the number of selling agents, then you need to create uh, new channels every time. So there's a there is mm -hmm. a uh, you know cost benefit to this uh, approach, and since uh, most mm -hmm. of the most of the sovereign bonds are only sold by some uh, important banks, then this approach is uh, perfectly fine for the uh, for the mm -hmm. use case that you have, right? I mean, if it is a more widespread sort of uh, a, a bond that has to be sold by many different parties, then then you got to have you know a different approach, and it, things are changing. So that's that's great. Uh, anybody mm -hmm. else has any questions? Otherwise, I'll ask uh, some more. Uh, yeah, hey, Kamlesh, hey. I, I have one question. Is, is anybody yes. else there? Uh, come yeah, Kamlesh, Kamlesh here. Kamlesh here. Yeah, I, I, I get it. Okay, go ahead. 
okay so uh, this is the private channel so i think we can see the four entities and uh, three look same and fourth one is a the requirement from uh, any some kind of party to have a separate channel like suppose bbl kbn ki ktb those are banks or some kind of sales agent yes how selling agents yes. right yes yes okay so but yes. but yes. for for example suppose right now only we have a five channel and suppose um, number of channels increase maybe suppose for example maybe uh, thousands of sales agent it could be or it could not be maybe in india or maybe in the bigger countries it could be the scenario where the sales agent could be the in numbers yeah, of good. yeah we just discussed that good. very topic right now right we just finished discussing that yeah. uh, okay. is there any other question yeah hey vip and this is tom um i have two questions one is technical one is business uh the technical question mm -hmm. is um why was fabric selected uh or what was the criteria for fabric being selected versus other uh private blockchains like quorum or corda or, or something like that and then the the business question was um it's kind of a an extension of what uh, manny wrote in uh, in the comments um, and that is why a blockchain versus some other um, solution? Um, that is, what problem is this actually solving? Or what, what did you guys find um, that was facilitated or made easier by using a blockchain-based solution? Okay, um, let, me, let me answer this on, on the second question. Um, okay, as, as I told you, we could, we could add as well. Um, Actually, you could as well implement this platform using the centralized, centralized based approach. Kantita, uh, we can't hear you properly. Can you hear me better now? Oh, yes. Much uh, okay. better. Um, actually, uh, yeah, as, a, as, a, as you can see, like, as you express the, the good observation on the private panels that, that that if there are many participants, then we have to stick to many panels. But um, we, I want to tell you that uh, we could as well implement this uh, on the centralized based approach, whereby the Bank of Thailand manage uh, everything uh, centrally. Um, but instead, we, we didn't choose to take that approach because we want to, to learn more about blockchain. But um, and also in, in terms of setting bond sales in Thailand, we, we there are only this many participants, only for selling agent banks that are currently in the market. So it's not very sophisticated, um, not too sophisticated to implement um, uh, this way. So um, yeah, this is, this is from my part. Okay. So, so the part, so for the question that why we select the hyperledger fabric because at the time that we start the project uh, there are a few uh, auction platform that are on the cloud and so that uh, if we if we, if we select this solution so we don't have to absorb a lot I mean like the transaction is quite large number so BOT don't have to uh, manipulate the overall business business case because some some business case also not related to BOT but we also need the data like the data that we have to create we we have to credit bond uh, the, sorry the data that selling agent has to credit bond so actually this data BOT is not is not like it's not like we BOT have to own this uh system by ourselves but actually it's just tsd do it by themselves so but our data also um circulate into the same into the into this network so that's why we we select a hyperledger fabric yeah so okay. it's uh, just a quick uh follow-up to that question was there anything else on the ibm blockchain platform that you took advantage of or in the ibm cloud Uh, actually, uh, I want to add on a little bit, like, at the time of our uh, implementation, our commercial bank is uh, the BLK bank. Um, Can't hear you again. Uh, sorry. Uh, 
sorry. Uh, okay, so uh, at the time of our implementation of this project, the commercial banks, including the, the all four, four selling agent banks involved in this project, they all uh, uh, developed a, a, a blockchain node based on Hyperledger Fabric uh, within the, the BCI Blockchain Community Initiative. Um, so they already have the existing knowledge and already owns node which they, they can utilize on our project as well. So that's why um, we also talk to them and we also learn from, from the BCI projects so that um, we kind of uh, adopt the, uh, the idea of uh, using uh, Hyperledger Fabric as well. Okay, yeah. thank you. So it looks like uh, Mohan has got a question. Hey, Vipin. Hey, thanks for this presentation. You know, I am more curious about, see, I read a lot about DeFi, right? The decentralized finance is the first word, right? So in your implementation, I'm trying to figure out where exactly does uh, uh, the decentralization aspect of <clears throat> bond issuance comes into play? You know, as I see your solution, uh, I see that you're trying to drive more efficiency in in the bond transactions rather than decentralization of the bond uh, market and the bond business process. I mean, I just, I, I'm just seeking clarification. Can you, uh, uh, and I think Tom asked this question in a different way now. So uh, can you just uh, um, highlight what the, uh, the thinking was when uh, you went into uh, a blockchain base, even a DLT could have helped you decentralize, uh, you know, a DLT, distributed ledger technology. So where is the consensus process? Where is the endorsements coming in? Uh, if you can just, uh, in your process. Did I make sense, Vipin, or okay. you can rephrase it? Uh, let, me, oh. let me try to answer it based on what I heard from these uh, people, that, no, no, no. I mean, from Kantithat and from Chavisa, because that will also clarify whether they presented this uh, in such a way that I could understand, right? I mean, it's not just, uh, just about, uh, uh, you know, what approach they took, but whether we understand why, why they did, the, did it this way. First of all, about decentralization, this is a buzzword that has been around. And according to Scott uh, Stornetta, any amount of decentralization, meaning uh, right now, for example, if you look at all those channels, like the public bond channel, you can see there are many, many participants there. And previously with centralized systems, I don't think they would have had access to those, that data that easily. So decentralization is not just uh, about putting it in a system where there are hundreds of uh, nodes, thousands of nodes, and all the people uh, participate, like in a DeFi situation. This is more of a CeFi situation, but it is more decentralized than the legacy system they showed you. That is my interpretation. Well, that is fair. You know, that's what I call product driving process efficiency. Um, you know, in the past it was uh, hopping and there were disconnected systems, but now the visibility is on a shared ledger. Um, and at least like each one of them has a copy of it. So you can at least have tamper proof copies of the same transaction. But think about this. It, it, it also allows for a launch pad into the next step, which is creating secondary markets integrating with payment systems more efficiently, doing OMS directly on the blockchain, uh, segregating the data in a separate uh, data, uh, you know, data store like an IPFS or something. Uh, you know, these kind of things are only possible if you start down this path. You, it is not going to be a big bang approach, according to me anyway, but maybe if Kantita or or uh, Chavisa have any other uh, points to make about this, I would be glad to hear. Yeah, in, in our opinion, it's uh, our project is only a small project, so it's only small use cases that, that adopt blockchain. 
and a lot of uh, a lot of elements in Boeing Seven Eleven rely on existing network, and and it's best for the ecosystem to still be relying on the existing networks. But however, um, we along with blockchain, blockchain, we might as well uh, use the existing system while connecting with, uh, for instance, API, so that we can best utilize our existing infrastructure as much as possible so it's it depends on what works for the for the the whole uh, ecosystem actually in my opinion okay uh, sounds great uh, now money has a question looks like uh, just to follow up on what Vipin has already raised, what are your next steps um, you know, in beyond, beyond what you have done so far? And also, uh, are there plans to integrate with your CBDC? Um, uh, well, we, we are pretty much focusing on bond first. And then, um, since uh, this, in this space, we only focus on the saving bond sales that are issued in primary market. We are planning to extend the usage. Uh, linkage to the other kinds of bonds, uh, such as the uh, government bonds that are issued via the ETA system. And also we are looking to the possibility of linking the uh, to with other systems so that we can facilitate the market transactions and also um, to link with the the um, information that are that are on the corporate bond side, so that kind of plan I can get all the information to like both the government bonds and public bonds and then private bonds. So that's the, the, the way we go on the on the kind of uh, the implementation that we are looking to to explore next year is to uh, on is basically focusing on the government bonds that are offered in, in private market. And then green bucket later on. So there is a lot of um, future work. Yes, a lot, a lot to be done. But but with CBDC, we still have yet to to um to to um we're not sure whether it's a uh, it's usable. Or valuable will be uh, adopted in 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 our network. So um, the payment side is still handled uh, externally, right? With the with your uh, with the payments. Yes, with the RTGS system. Yes. Um, so RTGS system that means that the payments are not direct; they are going to the selling agents. Who then pass on that uh, payment individually to the individual investors? Um, yeah, kind of. But the platform also facilitates payments a little bit in terms of it generates the reference uh, reference number for the selling agent banks, so that once the selling agent bank transfer uh, money uh, through the the RTGS system, then the 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 system, the payment system, would then acknowledge that this transaction is made for uh, saving bonds. Yes, but how does the money reach the investor? Like a you know person who has put in, let us say, three hundred baht, or hundred baht, or whatever, uh -huh. whatever the you know. So it's the selling agent pretty much manage the the. The fund payment. transfer. So they collect funds from the investor, then uh, they transfer money to the Bank of Thailand, then the Bank of Thailand to the PDMO. Oh, oh okay. That is one way. Now the other way, when the payment is, uh, when the uh, bond uh, coupons are paid, uh, but you haven't yet integrated the coupon payment or anything into that system, right? No. No, no, we have not. Are there plans for doing that? Uh, we need to explore in detail first. <laughs> yeah, sure. It's a possibility, yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, anyway, so we have uh, spent a delightful hour 
listening to you and asking questions. This is very exciting because even though it is only disrupting a portion of the uh, whole ecosystem, it is the first step. And uh, Tom, if you remember, the um, there was a paper by Martin Walker which talks about the hybrid uh, way in which blockchain will uh, appear, that it's not going to be a big bang approach and then parts of the system will get disrupted first and then uh, slowly the other parts will uh, in be integrated into the blockchain. Yeah, and I think uh, in general, this, this is a point I often make is that blockchain at this point really is just plumbing. And whether I do it with a central database or I do it with a distributed ledger almost doesn't matter. What matters is the solution that I build on top of it. Um, and really, uh, at some point, we're going to stop talking about blockchain because it just becomes another solution pattern. That's true. But the blockchain does bring that, uh, that limited decentralization we were talking about before, uh, which is not available in a centralized database. Um, but on top of that, you're right that when blockchain disappears, in fact, I have a article in Forbes about it, which I say, we will know that blockchain succeeded when we don't talk about blockchain anymore. And not just because it disappeared. Yes. <laughs> disappeared, it is like, uh, TCP IP or uh, HTTP, nobody talks about how it's implemented. Anyway, uh, thanks for showing up. Thanks, it's very late there in Thailand. Have a good night and uh, we will interact more on the, um, on the channels on email and I will try to get together some of these questions and as a uh, meeting minutes and let's hope this is the start of something beautiful. Thank you. Okay, Anything thank else? you for having us here and um, we'll be glad to be sharing our knowledge and our experiences. I hope it's uh, informative and useful for you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.